Hello, and welcome to Speaking of Supply Chain, where we explore trends, current events, and innovations impacting the logistics and supply chain industries. I'm your host, Ellen Wood, and I am joined today by Richard and Cesar from our UK office in Mibach, and we are going to be talking about... Um, what happens in the tendering process and what difficulties companies tend to face when they are going out to uh, to tender and trying to do it alone with their internal teams? Welcome, Richard and Cesar. Hi, Ellen. Thank you. Hi, Ellen. So this is such an interesting topic, and I know that this is something that we do very often within our company, and I know that clients out there, they often go out to tender. It's just part of their buying process. And so I can't wait to talk about this. Uh, but before we get started, I want to take things offline a little bit, talk about something a little bit more lighthearted. Um, what is the book that you are currently reading or the last one you read if you're not reading one right now? Cesar, are you reading anything right now? Yes, I am reading a book that's called Lifetime from Russell Foster. This okay. is in a book like to explain like to you a little bit about like the body clock. So oh, okay. yeah. So yeah, I know it's it's very far away from supply chain. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's That's because okay. it's, yeah, it's, it's like on a different topic. I want like to 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 read something different. So like this book explain like to you like like how like your body affect okay, like during like the day, what are like the changes that is happening in your body and mm -hmm. how you can improve um your sleep and well like your health in general. So yeah. Okay. That sounds interesting. Did you have you learned anything interesting? Are you very far into it? What's what's your most interesting part from the book so far? Yes, like for the moment, well until like the part I have I have read, because I didn't finish it. I am in like the first or the second chapter. Yeah, is it is like um we have like one part of the body who 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 is uh, who is responsible like to lead like the rest of the body and say hey like uh, you need like to produce these hormones at, at this hour of the night you need like to produce these hormones at the hour of the day so it's like responsible like to manage it so we don't have not only one part of like the body to focus and like to control like the body clock is is more like um a cellular level so yeah. interesting Interesting. Well, I'm going to come back to you in a couple of weeks when you're beyond chapter two and, and oh, yeah, see what else sure, yeah. you've learned. We can we can discuss it in more detail. Yeah, this an, another podcast, maybe. <laughs> Richard, what about you? Are you reading anything right now? Yeah, I, right now not, but just this weekend I finished one called Agent Six by Ooh. Tom Rob Smith. Is the last book of a trilogy, which is okay. basically following a Soviet uh, agent or detective. And uh, yeah, ba basically it. It's a really good book, so I would recommend it definitely. <laughs> yeah, well, I love reading novels. I uh, our listeners, if they've if they've followed our podcast for a while, they know I've used this question before. I'm an avid reader. I read lots and lots of books. Sometimes the books that I'm reading are um, are novels, you know, fiction things. I just finished uh, a, a great novel with Book Club. It was, I think I've talked about it already on another podcast, um, an Agatha Christie um, historical fiction. It was a fiction about what happened to her when she went missing. Um, back in the 1930s, she went missing for 11 days, uh, right after her husband told her that he wanted a divorce. And um, she's she went to her grave and never told anyone where she was or what she was doing for that time period. And so this particular author took some uh, creative liberty and wrote a story about what she thought could have been the reason for the disappearance. And it was in the style of Agatha Christie's writing. So it was really interesting. Um, but it was, you know, just a, a, a fluffy novel. And then just this week, weekend, I was given a book and it is, it is a huge book. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. It is, um, I just looked it up while, while you guys were talking, it is God created the integers. It's by Stephen Hawking. And it sounds really interesting, but it's about math and how the, the math, you know, works in the, in the natural universe. And I'm really excited about it. And yet it's like, it's a three inch wide paperback, like full size book. It's it's a lot. 
Yeah, but I really like how do you change because you start like with Agatha Chris and then you finish with the Stephen Hawking. <laughs> I like all kinds of books. I love professional development. I love personal development. I love just reading for the fun of it. I read all the time. It gets to the point where my kids are like, mom, could you please put down the book and play with us or do something? Can we go do something? All you're doing is sitting and reading. And I listen to audio books. I am constantly consuming information. <laughs> I'm going to make a great contestant on Jeopardy one day, if you guys are familiar with with the Jeopardy uh, uh, game show. Yeah, because I just read so much about so many different things. Yeah. It's a goal. Actually, I want like, to, to add like, to, to, to my list, to my wish list, like the first oh. book that you mentioned, of Agatha Christie. Yeah. It sounds okay. interesting. Okay, I will, I will send you a link to that. It's a great book. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. All right. On to our actual conversation today about... <laughs> Let's start. Um, Yes, the tendering process. So mm -hmm. especially when operations and logistics teams are um, well established within a company, it's assumed that when they're going to be making a purchasing decision that these people are the internal experts, they should know what to be able to do. But we know from our side, from the Mebox side, that that is not always the case, that they don't always uh have the acumen to make that purchasing process go smoothly for their company. And it's, it's incredibly difficult. It's, it's not necessarily hard in terms of the tasks that need done, but it is complex. So I've been part of a number of RFPs, RFQs, RFIs. There's lots of different acronyms for this request for information, question, or, uh, uh, RFQ, request for quote, and proposal. Yeah, quotation or proposal. So whether it's just information, whether they need a, a full solution, or whether they know what they need and they just need a price for it, um, depending on what's being purchased, they can be super simple or really complex. And you guys have written a white paper recently about why companies should seek external advice before they go live with this process. So tell me a little bit about what you what you detailed in this white paper. Yeah, we we normally here in the MIBA UK office in, in Oxford, what we normally work with or tender uh, is um, what, what we call the four wings of tendering, which is... Uh, software, which includes uh, WMS, WCS, for example, um, warehousing, which is a kind of project that is on the rise because of Brexit. A lot of companies are trying to open uh, new operations in the UK and very related also to, to this warehousing topic is uh, transportation, for example. If if, if you have a new warehouse, you need new transportation, of course. Uh, sometimes we manage uh, tender projects which are like a bundle of these, of these two wings. And uh, the last one is uh, MHE and automation, which is also quite related to Brexit, but also to COVID. Uh, companies have realized how uh, sensible the how sensitive sorry the uh, their supply chain is and their short staffing the issues that that can bring them so th they are trying to use their resources more efficiently so are using more automation so those are the four wings of tendering that we use and that we took into account when we wrote this uh, article or white paper uh, however, we consider that no matter how complex a tender project is, uh, these 10 tips are applicable to, okay. to Universal. every... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter if it's a new warehouse or stationary supplies, right? You, you can apply <laughs> the 10 of them, 10 of these tips to every kind of, of tender, definitely. Okay. So like, like the idea behind of like the white paper is to identify, okay, what are like the 10 main pillars or tips like all of the companies should follow up in order like to, to reach an, an a successful uh, result in the rendering processes. Because we so, as an amoeba, so, so sorry, Ellen. You... No, I was just going to say, so a successful tender would be what? That they purchase 
they they ultimately make a decision and purchase and are happy with that purchase yes yes like that is like that is like the main goal no so like here in me but we have like this expertise like working with different level of company size we have like the expertise in designing warehouses again okay. right now most of like the questions like the customer ask to us is hey like we want like to implement like an automation solution we think about like what is a, the solution or the technology that we want but we are not sure about if like this supplier is like the best for us we don't want like to to pay like an over rate because uh, they approach to us first so they want like to have like an uh, objective um an objective uh, on a third party who help them like to take that level of decision yeah and, and that set point of eyes. is like yes like yeah, and and, and and it's not only about making the purchase itself because basically anybody could do it but a successful tender for us is that in the long run the client is still happy with that decision that we or any other external support help them to do to take that decision so that's a successful Indeed. So like for me, it's like to, when you want like to get married because you are going like to have a partner for a long time, for a long term. So we need like to think carefully. Okay. Because if, if you are going like to, to say, Hey, I am going like to implement like a new highway technology. Okay. It's not only like that implementation because there is coming like the maintenance and there is coming like the training. So probably it's not in a relationship for one or two years. We are talking about like five, 10 years of relationship. Like the same happen if we are looking for an, a new TPL or like an, a new WMS. <laughs> okay. So like there is always like these things like it, it keep to you attached to the supplier or to to your partner for a long time. <laughs> so it's important like to have an, a good relationship with him or her. No? So it, what we're what we're doing essentially is um, going after the the risk mitigation here. That this risk is um, a potential bad relationship, and we are trying to avoid this client having buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. Indeed, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so it's not just about finding the right product for what they need, although we you can help with that or the tendering process can be part of that. We're trying to find which solution is going to fit best. I mean, that's, that's also part of maybe a, a concept design or, um, but even in the tendering process, figuring out who is going to participate in this tender, who's going to bid. Um, but there's also the aspect that Cesar, you touched on it, that, this external set of eyes is going to be able to share some of that cross-functional or cross-industry best practices. So, you know, a customer coming in and saying, you know, I, I'm in this industry and I'm in, I'm in this role in my company and we know that we need something. Um, but is this the best is, are we going after the right thing in the first place? So is, is that a situation where you've come into a tendering, uh, project and told the customer, um, actually, no, this is not what you should be looking for. We need to back up a step and make sure that you're actually shopping for the right thing to meet your needs rather than just, okay, you're, you're looking to buy X, Y, Z per, you know, piece of material handling equipment. I can help you with that. It's stepping back a little bit further. And is this going to meet your business need? Yes, it's happened. Normally what we do is like to receive like the needs of the customer, but not only like in terms of words, okay? Like we, we, we really like like to receive like the data. As Mibak, like we always analyze data. We are in a company who focus a lot of on the data, use it like these numbers, like to, to transfer or convert them in requirements or physical requirements. So in some cases, yeah, like the customers, hey, what we are looking for is like an, like an, a manual solution, like to reach it like this throughput, and they always think, uh, they think about like VNAs, for example, like very narrow idle solution, but like considering that level of flows, that level of stock and try like to use it in like the maximum potential height, it's more convenient like to think about like an automated solution. So in these cases, like we challenge that original idea, okay, and try like to orientate it like to the customer. Why? Because when we go like to the next phase with that, uh, with the corresponding um, suppliers, if we only think about like an, a manual solution, we are only going to to look for uh, suppliers of racking, but like that is not going like, to be an, a proper solution. And like the idea is like to have an, a solution to be sustainable in the long term, 
because like this manual solution has like an unlimited time of life, considering that like the flows that he is expecting like to have at it. So like depending on like what is like the situation, okay, or what is like the data or what is the horizon that they that the customer is looking for, like like the solution could be vary. And normally what we do is check it like with the customer, what is the requirements in terms of data. But this is not only applied like for, for all of like these four wins that uh, Richard explained. For example, for an AWMS, we need like to look for processes. So what are your current requirements in terms of processes? Okay, like this is what you have now, but this is what you're going like, to plan like to have in the future. Okay, so like based on that, okay, like we can start like to think about, hey, like the AWMS should have some additional capabilities that you are not mapping at the beginning. And that it could change completely, like the level of information, like the customer required at the end. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's depending on like more or less of the situation. Everyone's going to be different. Yeah, I just want to say that also when, when we manage a tender project, we it's not only about keeping the, the client in, in line and helping mm -hmm. them to understand actually their needs, but also the bidders. Sometimes mm -hmm. the bidders trying to be, you know, to come with a solution that is very innovative. They come with ideas that are not always the best. And it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that, but it's not actually what the client needs. So we need to try to keep on the, on, on the right lane, both parties, right? And, and we're in the middle helping them to actually achieve the, yeah, the successful uh results yeah all right yeah well, yes you, you read my mind richard because i, <laughs> I also would like to mention it it uh, like the only point that i would like to add is that um if we have like an like an if we are in this phase like okay like the leaders send their proposals um personally i prefer like to be open okay like to listen what other experts try like to suggest like to us so i it's fine for me if somebody say hey like this is like the original idea that miva has Okay, this concept design, this level of detail in the WMS, okay, for transportation, et cetera. But like we come like with this additional solution. Hey, I like, implement like in a new type of racking, like an a sorter, like an AGVs, whatever. Like the most important one here is like, how do you, um, what is like the reasons or the motivations that you have behind that, like to justify th this new solution? Because as MIBA, we normally, we evaluate like the technologies before like to recommend. So normally like we say hey like this is like the right solution because we have like these reasons on behind if like that if like the bidder one like to propose like something different it's important like to say why you know we always need like to be open like to to think outside the box exactly so yeah so from from the perspective of yes it's a great idea to have external support in this tender for the client because make sure that what the client is asking for is actually going to meet the business need that biz that buyer's remorse is going to be there if it doesn't solve their problem but if they have this if they have this very narrow idea of what can solve their problem without listening to um, other options or, or someone playing devil's advocate saying, no, I, I think this would actually be a better solution for you. And it will avoid that buyer's remorse. So that risk of, of getting boxed into an idea because you don't have all the information. Um, so that's one risk. But then Richard, you brought up an excellent point that when you have to go out to these potential suppliers of whatever it is, whether it's a, a facility or whether it's material handling equipment or software, um, that when those buyers come or those suppliers come back and try and offer a solution with, within that framework of the, the tendering request, um, if there's, if there's any friction and, a client is doing this on their own, then that's a potential partnership that they're, you know, getting into. That's this marriage. And it could start off rocky if there's an argument at the beginning. So by having that third party there to kind of manage that process and be that, you know, to, to stick with the, the marriage analogy, you know, this is their, their counselor to help or, or a mediator to help with that process and make sure that everybody is speaking the same language. Everybody is coming with, you know, to the table with the best intentions and really making sure that whoever they walk away from, even if that, even if that supplier is not chosen for this particular tender, that they're on the table still for future potential engagements. 
Yeah, definitely. As as, as Cessa said, um, we try to keep an, an an open mind always, receive all proposals, try to keep a good relationship with every bidder, even if probably their solution was not was not the best for a particular project. But we try to keep a good relationship with them because we know that there will be more projects and we need to go to them and ask them for a proposal. And so, so yeah, it's, it's really important to, to keep that relationship with them and with the client, definitely. Yeah. Normally what we do as Miva is like provide a feedback to, to the bidder and explain like the reasons why they are not continuing like to the next phase, okay, to the, to the final negotiation, to the final round or why we're not selected, no? This is an important like to say, hey, like, for example, to put like in a real case, like in a previous experience, um, one supplier was really keen on in one specific technology, okay, and said like, this is a technology, like you should follow up this, this, and this, and like the customer didn't want that technology. And that was like one of the reasons, like the customer said, hey, I will not want like to have something that I don't like and I don't want or I don't need. And like, this is like the feedback for like the, the bidder. Okay, like you push like too hard like to this technology, probably it's because you have like your reasons. Okay, like probably it's like this, this warehouse is like the DC that you have available, etc. But like, this is not what like the customer want or need. And like, that is like the reason. So, so it's the like relationship explain, management. Yes. Yes, yes. It's, here is very important, like, like to in, in this kind of business because like we are have a lot of relationship with many people. It's an important like how we approach like to them and how we explain like the reason behind it. So we need like to to have time like to explain to everyone. Okay, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so when confronted with the term outsourcing, which is essentially what this is, you know, mm -hmm. if a company it has internal resources that are capable of doing something, um, there's, there's a hesitation when it comes to hiring an external firm to do it or overcoming that objection that we should be able to do this in-house. We should be able to handle this ourselves. Um, how often is that the case where you're coming into a tender and there's a little bit of, um, hesitation or, or pushback that they should have been able to do this themselves, or they have internal resources, but someone at the, at the decision-making table has said, no, we, we really need an external third party to, to help us manage this process, or we just don't have the internal resources. They don't have the, the time or availability to manage this tendering process. They, they're busy doing their job. <laughs> um, and, and now we need something else. So we need to bring someone else in. Um, is it more likely to have, you know, a cost savings in the long run when it comes to utilizing a third party for this tendering process? Yeah. Um, it is very common that situation. Like it, it's basically always, and actually every time we, every time we send an offer, for, for a tender project, uh, our main competitor is not another company, is the client itself who is internally debating whether we should seek for external support or run this um, internally. And yes, it is true. It's, it's very tempting to run it, to run that project internally because in the short term, yeah, it might seem uh, like a cheaper option. However, as we have said this is the result of, of a tender project is like a marriage, which will last at least three or five years as, as minimum, is, is, is a contract that will run for several years. So, and, and, and here is where looking for external support becomes a cost effective, actually, and is where you can actually see the savings because, for example, and, and these are a couple of the reasons that we mentioned in the white paper. And is that, for example, um, the, the professional or the consultant, whatever you want to call that person, uh, through his experience or knowledge knows, for example, what are the right suppliers that should be part of the long list and not lose any time with candidates that from the start were not a suitable option. Um, also, 
because again, experience and knowledge, the consultant knows uh, what are the risks that the client might encounter in the long term that they not necessarily are aware of. So in the long term, yeah, it is more cost effective for the client to seek for external support among other reasons, right? Like sustainability, for example, etc. Yeah, that is, yeah, yeah, Richard, you are completely right. Like there is, there is always this kind of challenge, like, because like the costume is also is part of the competitors. Okay. If you want, but like here, like the main, one of the main reasons like to, to, to motivate like the customers, like to go with Miva and not continue like doing um, with the purchasing area is because these kind of technologies or situations is not something like the purchasing area face every day. This is something very specific, okay? And not having like this level of knowledge could complicate like the time like the customer has. So for example, like right now or like some months ago, okay, we, we are almost finished that project, but like the customer asked to us to, to prepare like a proposal, we prepare like the proposal, they decided to do it internally. But a couple of months ago, they decided to call again us because they say there is a delay of three months. Okay, so we need like someone to help us like, to finish the evaluation. We really need help, yeah. It, yeah. It's, and, and it's a it, lot it's, of work. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of work because like they invite like they invite like more than 20 potential bidders like for <laughs> for this long list so like they go like for 20 like to 5 like to 10 it's quite difficult it's quite challenging okay because like okay how are you going like to evaluate like these guys i don't know like this knowledge this is like the first time that we are going to evaluate how is going like, to be like the template how is like the process that they should follow up or what are like the right questions that you should include in the r5 or rq so all of this information, it gets complicated. And, and at that moment, it's like when Miva has an expert, we enter and help them like to take the right solution or the right decision. Also, one, one of the things is that we, s some bidders have uh, sellers that are very good, actually. And it's easy to feel some kind of bias towards that company. It's like, oh yeah, I, I like this person. I like talking to this person. He's very, he's very good at this. And probably their solution is not actually the best, but they have a very good seller. So, so we, we have encountered, yeah, a, a lot of times that situation, but we as consultants, we don't have any personal gain or personal interest there. So we can provide an objective evaluation to, to the client and not fall under that charming of, of seller of, yeah, of, of the sellers. So. Or yeah, be dazzled by the technology, you know? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As well. Yeah. 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 And, and also it's like challenging also like some performance they have, like there are, they, they put like some numbers on them could be realistic. And we asked me, okay, hey, like these numbers are impossible like, to reach. Okay. <laughs> So like, okay, it, it sounds good, but like in the reality, probably it's going like to be like too difficult like to reach. Probably that is like the maximum performance that you could have, but not like the realistic one that you're going like to have every day. So like we, we need like to, to check it in or try like to be objective or be objective. Like when we do like this kind of analysis in order to not create like this bias that Richard mentioned, because again, like there are many sellers that are very good. <laughs> okay. They are, very good. they convince like to you very quick. But like, like when you start like to see like the, your solution is like, like, the, like the part that we need like to evaluate. So what I hear is that there's, there's two areas where utilizing this external partner for this tendering process is really a helpful mediator. So the first one is in the decision, the internal decision team. So between purchasing, between operations and between executive management. So making sure that all three of those, those work streams, those, those organizations, you know, business units understand the, the need and the result of whatever this purchase is going to be. So everyone's on the same page. Everyone agrees that 
moving forward is is the right process. You don't have to worry about getting buy in or you know going through this process and then going to the the financing department or the the purchasing department and getting told no because it's too expensive. There really needs to be that that buy in and that internal communication with the company first. And so we help mediate that process, or you help mediate that process. I don't do it. Um, and then also between the the suppliers to make sure that they're they're honest and they're well. We, we want to believe that they're all honest and they're just trying to, you know, earn their living, but that they are truthful and upfront about the limitations of what it is that they're able to deliver and that all the expectations are managed on both sides of the table. Am I hearing that right? Yes. Yes. Yes, of course. And like, as you mentioned, uh, well, I, I'm telling like very quick, like one previous experience, like, for example, like we change like the technology with the customer like he wanted like to have originally like an a pop-up sorter and like the end we say like hey shoe sorter is the best but we this is happening like after like sending like the rfi the rfq oh yeah so, so they have to start all them. over <laughs> not necessarily but like, i communicate like to to the bidders hey like we have decided like to change is increasing like the performance okay like do you have it like this capacity like the supply us with mm -hmm. this new technology and some of them were very honest and say, hey, like, no, unfortunately, we don't have it like that capabilities. Okay, but we we still have like a good relationship because at any moment or, or uh, is going like, to appear like other opportunity, we can contact like to you because you have like that specific technology for that specific scenario. And this is like like the part like we try like to, to when we when we develop like the white paper with Richard, we highlight it first our capacity like to identify, hey, of all of these potential supply or suppression suppliers or bidders that you could have, which could adapt according to your needs. Okay, so it, like not all of the technologies is going like, to fit for you, but we need like to reduce it like the universe and focus only in the bidders that could fulfill your requirement for your specific requirement. Any last thoughts before we share to our listeners where they can find this white paper, these 10 tips? Yeah, I mean, we understand that it might uh, feel very tempting, right, to run uh, tenders internally. It seems like an easy thing to do. It would be a cheaper option. However, in the long term and actually in the midterm as well, uh, looking for external support can actually provide advantages uh, to your business. It will help you grow in a healthier way and avoid certain mistakes that the consultants know about and can and, and can help you avoid those yeah those issues that, that you find yeah exactly those pitfalls so yeah in in it's a good thing to think about that option and i think it's always a positive option to consider when looking for a service or a product to tender. Especially some of the sizes of these purchases. I mean, we're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Why would you, why would you risk that if you could ensure that this process is going to go smoothly and the result is going to be exactly what you need? Yeah, exactly. Even, even a cheap option is normally not cheap. So you, you want to make sure that you made the right decision and not after a couple of years say, you know, this was not the right solution, but I liked that person, that seller was very charming. You want to avoid that situation and make sure that you made the right choice from the start. Yeah, like, so, so from my perspective, what is like the first thing that we need like, to think is asking like the question, what is our experience in with this product, with this tenderness process? Did we do before? If you, is it something that you do frequently, you don't need like to have an external advisor at all. But if this is something that you do very weird, you don't know, okay, what exactly you are going like, to purchase. It's much better if you go like to an external advisor and ask like to him, Hey, like you have an experience on this one. Okay. We have like this timeline. Is it feasible? Is it not feasible? How we can adapt it? Okay. Like for me, like that is like the first question. Like the second one is think about, okay, how long is going like, to be my relationship with this new partner that I'm planning like, to do? Is it going like, to be only once? 
Okay, is it going to like to buy like in a, like in a bunch of papers, or is something that I'm going to need on a continuous maintenance? So, is it fulfill like this to to think like to be something that is very unique or new for us, and it's going to be like in a long term relationship? Is make it like in a trade off? It's more convenience like to go to an external advisor and ask for like the advice and say, hey, like you have an experience in this, help me like with this. Help me like to identify what is like the right partner, the right solution, and the right price that fulfill my requirement. And after I having that, we can start like to have like an attend an, an a good tendering process. We can advise like to you like to re to reduce it like this universe of potential bidders. Help like with you like with our expertise like to confirm that that solution is the right one for you. Okay, and then think about in the future, in the long term, and say, hey. This supplier offer like to you 24 seven hours of maintenance. This supplier offer like to you like an, a continuous improvement, adapting to according to your own needs and requirements. So only like, like to, to finish it, like to give to you a, a little bit of the experience that we have like with Richard. Last year, we finished an, an attendering process with, with a supplier like who wants like to, to start a new operation here in, here in the UK. They want at the beginning like to continue the relationship with their current partner because they have like a long history in Germany, I think so. Yeah, established relationship. It. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they like to keep at it. But like then when we start like to evaluate what they offering here in the UK, probably was not the most convenient. And with him, we found like an another potential bidder. He liked it like the offer, like the offer that they did, like the technology, okay, the relationship. Um uh, was very well like during like the conversations and the solution fulfilled what the customer wants and it was like the technology and the solution that they wanted so at like, the end of the day it was very smooth to move from from one position to another one because we found okay like the right partner that they needed for here for this market so like this kind of bit is happening okay like when you have it like the right information Okay, like you understand it, like what is your business? You understand it, like like the constraints that you have, and help like to you to to take like the good decision or the right decision. Excellent. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you so much, Cesar and Richard, for sharing your insights on the complexities of the tendering process and what resources are available to support companies who use this, uh, this tendering process for their purchasing decisions, because I know there are a ton of them out there. Um, I've worked, like I said, I've, I've even worked on RFPs uh, with, with Meebok and, and helping to make sure that everything goes smoothly for our clients. I'm sure our listeners can benefit from I'm reading this this white paper, this 10 tips, um, and that can be found. I'll put a link to it in our episode description. You'll find it down there. Um, how can they reach you on LinkedIn? Is is that the best way to uh, to find you guys? Yes, of course. Like, please, like, feel free like to reach Richard or I if they have any questions related like to to this topic or all of the topics of people. We are more than more than happy like to receive your questions. <laughs> yeah, and LinkedIn, which is. Just our names or yeah, our <laughs> our Mibak, uh emails, which is our that surname is at mebak.com. All right. I will make sure I have those links in the episode description as well. If our listeners, if any of you out there have a suggestion for a topic or would like to be a guest on our show, please let me know. Drop me a line. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can reach me at podcast at mebok.com. As always, thank you for listening to Speaking of Supply Chain. If you've enjoyed our show, please rate us in whatever podcast pro platform you prefer. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google, and Spotify. And be sure and tune in next time.